My name is Andrew Smith. I'm one of the blood cancer support coordinators at the Leukemia Foundation. Uh, one of my primary roles is to help people to live the best life that they can whilst experiencing or managing a blood cancer. Um, so we're here today to talk about how we can give you some tips and advice um, and some quality information to help you do that. And, and, we, and we're going to particularly talk about uh, a, a side effect called cancer-related fatigue today. One of the most important things to consider when talking about cancer-related fatigue is that it's very different to normal everyday tiredness and normal everyday fatigue. You have a big day, you're at work, you're juggling family, you're juggling other commitments, you're exhausted at the end of the day, your energy levels are, are nothing. You have a decent sleep, you wake up the next morning and you're, and you're feeling energised and refreshed. And we know this doesn't happen for people experience, experiencing cancer-related fatigue. They might be sleeping um, long periods of time and waking up um, feeling, feeling exhausted and not having enough energy, um, whether it's physical energy or, or um, emotional or cognitive energy to face the things that they need to do in their, in their everyday lives. So it's a really important point to make that it's, that it's different to everyday tiredness and fatigue. Um, one, of the, one of the ways in which it's different is that it's not proportional, it's disproportionate to, to the things that people are doing in their everyday life. Um, and that's a really important important point to make as well. Um, and for me, one of the most important aspects of what cancer-related fatigue is, is that it is impacting in a, often in a negative way on somebody's everyday life. Um, so so there, there's some really key points about what cancer-related fatigue is. How does it feel for people experiencing it? People can often describe it as a feeling of heaviness, um, and that might be a physical sensation of heaviness or weakness. It might be a, a, a cognitive or mental a feeling of fogginess or not being as switched on or not being as um, able to, 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 to do those cognitive processing tasks that you, that you do automatically. Um, so they're some of the ways in which people might describe the, the, the feeling of cancer-related fatigue. Uh, what causes cancer-related fatigue? Um, you know, we know that, uh, ca that cancer itself and cancer treatment are obvious um, significant contributing factors of cancer-related fatigue. Um, there's other considerations that, that go into that um, that go into that uh, equation as well, and they can be um, level of level of previous um, fitness, level of previous health. It might be managing other types of medical conditions. It might be managing a, a mental health condition as well. Um, these are all things that can really impact your overall energy levels for somebody experiencing cancer and cancer-related fatigue and they're all really important considerations because it is generally um, not one thing or another when we're talking about cancer-related fatigue. It's generally a multiple, uh, a multiple pronged approach to, to how people are experiencing uh, this, this side effect. The first thing I'd suggest for anyone who's experiencing any sort of blood cancer fatigue is to try and figure out um, how I can get the most up-to-date quality information. And that might be directly through your, your haematologist or your oncologist, it might be through uh, a cancer nurse, it might be through one of the blood cancer support coordinators here at the Leukemia Foundation. It's really important to understand what cancer-related fatigue is and what it isn't. Um, and by that I mean, um, is, there something, is there something happening in your medical situation? Um, you know, really low red blood cell count will make anyone feel, um, will make anyone feel extremely fatigued. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that that's, that's cancer-related fatigue. It's a medical situation that needs addressing. So that's one of the first things, one of the first things to do is get, get attached to the most quality information you can find or the most quality and knowledgeable health professional. The second thing I'd ask people to do is to, is to have a look at their own individual situation. So this cancer-related fatigue can affect people in a mild way, in a moderate way, in a severe way. And figuring out where you sit on that, on that, on that spectrum is really, really important. If, you're, if it's really, really impacting your everyday life, um, if it's impacting your work life, if it's impacting your, your willingness to, to engage in the things that you want to 
that you like and want to do, like, need and want to do, then it's probably something on the more moderate or severe side and I would, I would suggest connecting with a health professional um, as soon as you can. And our blood cancer support coordinators across the country um, have really great networks and, and, and can be a great first point of call to, 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 um, to, to guide you, link you and connect you with a relevant health professional in your local area. Um, so health professionals that are, that are, that are good at managing this, this side effect might be a, an occupational therapist, an exercise physiologist or a physiotherapist if you're experiencing that, that really severe or, or highly moderate cancer-related fatigue. For, for the majority of people, this is something with the right information and some, some little tweaks, they can manage this on their own. Um, and they might just need a little bit of they might just need a little bit of guidance. So that's probably the second thing. The third thing each individual can do is map their energy levels. So cancer-related fatigue um, can affect people in different ways. For some, it might be that persistent low energy levels. For others, it might be wildly variant energy levels. So uh, Monday and Tuesday, I feel great. I'm going to go and you know do as many things I can. Um, I'm going to have a 10 hour day at work, I'm going to be out and about um, and then they might come, have that feeling of come, coming crashing down where their energy levels just plummet through the floor and it might take them a, a few days to recover. Um, for, those, for those situations I'd, I'd recommend people, I'd recommend people um, have a really good look and map out how their energy levels are playing throughout the day and throughout the week and you can do this over a couple of weeks. And what you might look for is patterns. Patterns where you've got more energy levels, so you, you might be someone that their energy levels are better during the day, um, or you might be someone where they're, they're, they're better in the morning and they slowly, slowly, um, slowly get lower as the day goes on. This is important to think about the three, the three P's of managing your energy level, energy levels. So they're planning, prioritising and pacing. Three really important things that are really simple to remember. For individuals that are, that are in the situation where they've, they've got their head around their, their diagnosis, um, they know what their treatment plan is, um, they're, they're experiencing some cancer-related fatigue but they feel like they've got their head around that a little, a, a little better. Um, and they're trying to improve their physical health and well-being, their physical activity and exercise, but it's not happening, it's not working, they're falling into, um, they're facing barriers. Um, what can they do and where can they go to get support? And there is a lot of support around now. There are a lot of health professionals both within treatment centres and also in the community that are trained to deal with and manage people managing a cancer diagnosis with cancer-related fatigue. So my first suggestion would be to touch base with your with your local blood cancer support coordinator and they will have a really good knowledge and network of which healthcare professionals are in your local community that might have specific expertise in dealing with um, firstly dealing with cancer and then potentially dealing with um, with your type of, of blood cancer as well you want to get the right information at the right place at the right time um, and our coordinators are, all over the country have great networks and, are, and, and can connect you with the right people to give you that structure, to give you that guidance, and to give you that confidence that, that they're going to put a program together that's, that's based on an assessment of your individual needs, what's important to you in your life, and also what the evidence supports is going to work to improve your, your physical health, your physical well-being, and your overall, overall quality of life. One of the other things I'll add to that as well is, is sometimes, sometimes people can, can be in the situation where they're trying to improve their physical health and well-being, they're doing lots and lots of physical activity and exercise, sometimes more than when they were first, prior to when they were first diagnosed with cancer. And they might be doing, they might be in a situation where their energy, overall energy levels are suffering because of it. Um, they might be doing too much, they might be prioritising their exercise too much over other important aspects of their life. And again, this is a really individual conversation and it's that sitting down with, with whether it's a support person, a carer, 
your, your medical specialist, one of our blood cancer support, support coordinators, figuring out what's really important for you, what are the priorities and how you can adjust, adapt and prioritise um, while still maintaining physical activity where, where you can to improve and maintain your health and well-being and overall quality of life. A main take home message for me for people experiencing cancer related fatigue is that there's always something that you can do for yourself. Um, whether this is getting the right information, connecting to the right people, getting specialised support. Um, if you're looking for quality information, our website leukemia.org.au is a great place to start. Um, our 1800 number, 1800 620 420 will put you in touch with our blood cancer support coordinators in your, in your local area um, and they can connect you with, with appropriate health professionals within their local networks if this is a real challenge for you. So there's, there's always something that you can do to improve your quality of life and to lessen the experience of cancer or leather fatigue.